She's crazy. That's what I heard. Just plain crazy. All I know, something's got to change. We've been doing the same thing over and over and over for 30 years. And our church is dying. Well, I think we need a pastor. Since our budget is just about zero, no one else seems to be interested. Wait just a minute. With all due respect to the current situation, our bylaws state that the vote must be unanimous, and I still vote N-O. That lady came in with change on her mind. It's like this. When the bridegroom returns, I don't want him to find us saying, Master, this very month alone, why, we had four potluck dinners, we had two garage sales, we didn't lead anybody to the Lord, we didn't pray for the sick, and we didn't disciple anybody. Did we do good? I have a proposal. Let's bring our churches together. $175,000 worth of repairs? Where are we gonna get that from? I knew I should have found a new church. <laughs> Give me that thing. This is gonna be a must read at the precinct. And you, you're under arrest. I think you'll make a great head deacon too. Maybe in a year or two, maybe assistant pastor. We need to get people back in church that's going to restore the traditions of the church. Now, I don't know if this is true, but I heard rumors that he even cheats God. Mm -hmm. But do they have a heart for it, or are they just sticking a hook in your mouth and reeling you in so you'll leave here and go with them? What I think is you and your basket need to go back to the little boy's room, have a little talk with that Deacon Hall. In comes Deacon Hall. No. Yes, he did. <laughs> now, I hear tell, he decided that we were really weren't all that bad, so he was officially returning to the church. Yes, but you can't go in there. But I need to talk to her. I need to talk to her now. You can't. She's busy. She had, this is her prayer time and her study time. And she does not want to be bothered. But she needs to see me because we both heard from the almighty God about my son. There she is. There's the angel. I'm sorry, Pastor but she would not take no for an answer. I had to meet the angel of the Most High that was sent from God. I had to meet the one that God sent to my baby to put him on the path to righteousness. You know what? Please tell me that you have not made another deal with social services or did Bert come by here when I wasn't here? Honestly, I have no idea what's going on here. Ma'am, is it possible you have the wrong person? You are mentioning somebody saving your son? I prayed, I've been praying that God would send somebody into his life to deliver him from his wicked, wicked, evil ways. And when I got the call from the police, I just knew that they were gonna tell me that he was dead. But hallelujah! He was just in jail. No worse for the wear. Except he had this big old knot beside his head. I knew that that was the vengeance of the Lord that was sent to smote him. Jawbreaker. Oh, I know. That's what they call him. Jawbreaker. 
but to me he will always be my little Robbie. Madam, your little Robbie beat the snot out of a young woman, almost killed her. Then he threatened one of my deacons if he didn't turn her over. Now, I'll admit, whacking him probably wasn't the smartest thing I've ever done, but somebody had to stop your little Robbie. Not the smartest thing you've ever done. May I remind you of the time- Might I remind you that there's every possibility the paychecks may be just a little late this week. Like I said, losing his parents like he did shook him real bad. And then came this Jezebel, woman of the streets. She put her claws in him. She put her spell on his mind. And then when she spent his money, just dumped him. And that's when he got mean. So, you mean to tell me that your little Robbie was so heartbroken that he started pimping prostitutes? You know what? Talk to the left because you ain't right. I'm telling you, it was that Jezebel. Ladies. Oh. Mrs. Jones, I am sincerely sorry that I had to have your son arrested. No, you're not. Neither am I. I'll take jail over dead any day. You see, I was praying that God would send somebody into his life to deliver him and to set him on the right path. And God sent you, the pistol-packing pastor. <laughs> It was a water pistol. A water pistol? My Robbie backed down to a water pistol. The women of my social club will never let me live this one down. <laughs> Wait, social club? Yes, I'm a member of the Society of Women for the Betterment of Society. <laughs> Wait, so you get together and solve the world's problem over homebrew and bingo? Really? The Bible says in Timothy to take a little wine for your stomach and also for your chronic illnesses. <coughs> sorry, I'm sorry. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Now, we've been praying. I've been praying that God would send you, and he sent you to us. I need you to go over to that jail, and I need you to lead my son, Robbie, to Jesus. Now, I got to see this. Paychecks, Gina. Late paychecks. Think upon it. <sighs> Mrs. Jones, I hear your heart, but I am not the right person for the job. In fact, I'm fairly certain I have remained very high on his persona non grata list. Translation, the man still can't stand me. Oh, Pastor, please. I'm begging you, please. <sighs> Mrs. Jones, how about this? As I said, I'm not the person, but I think I know who is. His name is Sam. Now, I'll give you a heads up. He's a very, very quiet, unassuming, low-key kind of person, but he's been where your son is. And through the grace of Almighty God, he's turned his life around. And now I'm telling you, he has a powerful anointing with winning souls. And he does it through his jail ministry. Yeah, now that he does. He does. Well, thank you, Pastor. Thank you so much. Let me think for a minute. How about if I call a policeman friend of mine, get him to go pick Sam up, have them go over to the jail, and let's just see what Jesus does. Hmm. Thank you, I knew I could depend on you. Well, you know, in truth, thank you. Because frankly, I'm starting to get a little excited about this thing. Now, Gina, come on. How many times have I said to you ad nauseum? that when God really needs to get something done, nine out of 10 times, he finds somebody that's been through something, somebody that understands 
darkness and knows what it's like to come into the light. Why? Because it's that kind of person. Honey, they'll march through the gates of you know where to do whatever God calls them to do. Oh, no, I think I'm starting to get kind of excited about the possibilities here. Well, my son has been through plenty. And I know that God is going to use him for the kingdom. Mm -hmm. I can see it now. I'm getting all flushed just thinking about it. Robbie Jones, man of God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Praise the Lord. Can I get an amen? Amen. Can I get another? Amen. 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 Deputy, thank the sheriff for allowing us to come by today. Really appreciate it. Well, he always holds for rehabilitation. Let me explain something to you guys. This guy's meaner than a two-headed snake. Let's go take a real parting of the Red Seas to get him to come around. But just think if Moses could do it, imagine what the Son of God can do. <laughs> yeah, you might have a point there. Hey man, somebody gonna get my phone call. And has my bell been set yet? Because I'm ready to get out of this place. Listen, sit down and shut up. Jawbreaker, you got visitors. Jawbreaker? Yeah, Jawbreaker. His real name is Robert Q. Jones. On the street, though, he's known as Jawbreaker. You sure you want to spend some time with this guy? Yeah, the street name of the last person I led to the Lord was Bone Crusher. I think Jesus and I can handle this. Jones, come on. Up against the cage. You guys got 15 minutes. I'll be sitting over here. All right. I'm Officer Lansky. I think we've met before. And this is Sam Connor. Pastor Jenkins sent us by. Jenkins? That crazy old woman's the reason I'm in here. No, it's because your mama. My mama? What's my mama got to do with this? Your mama called Pastor Jenkins. What? Seems that she's been praying for you for a long time. And she thinks we're the answer to her prayers. Give me a break. No, his mama's been praying for him. Ain't that so sweet? Shut up, man. Hey, hey, cut it out. Uh, Officer Lansky showed me your bike in the impound lot. Nice bike, by the way. Oh, 2012 Road Life Custom. Mm, mm, mm. Screaming Eagle package, Ryan Hart pipes, chrome to the gills. You know your bikes. He ought to. He's the president of the CMA. Christian Motorcyclist Association. Christians? Yep. Bible thumpers? Yep. Man, I'm out of here. My time up. Before you go, let me ask you a question. What? Simple question. You go by Rob or Robert? Jawbreaker works for me. Here's the question. How's life going for you, Rob? Real well. Well, it was really well until I got locked up in this place. So let me ask you again. How's life going for you? You know, you could be facing up to 20 or 30 years in one of these. Well, let's get started. Yeah, man, get on in here away from those Bible thumpers. All they want to do is just pretty you up and get you saved. Hey, pipe down and shut up. I've heard enough out of you. Come on, man. What do you have to lose by talking to us? <laughs> Patience. Okay, smart mouth. Let me start off by telling you that most of the people that turn their backs on us, they're dead, and not from natural causes. Usually a gunshot in the head, knife in the gut. So if you want to end up that way, get in there and start designing your own coffin. I'll give you five minutes. Speaking of dead, do you happen to know where you're going when you die? You're gone, kaput, out of here, buried. You're wrong. There is a heaven and a hell, and a God that loves you and wants to spend eternity with you. You're starting to sound like my mama now. Your mama is a wise woman. Ooh, and you're, you're mama's boy too? <laughs> Don't worry, I'll take care of this in a minute. I'll be back in there. You, 
Sit down and be quiet. I had enough of you. Don't let him mess with you. Just remember that Jesus says, if anyone is ashamed of me and my words, the Son of Man will be ashamed of him when he comes into his Father's glory. Here's the only thing that you have to put into your brain. That Jesus is not ashamed of you. He's just disappointed in what you've become. He created you to be something wonderful and beautiful. Yeah, I just don't see it that way. God says you are fearfully and wonderfully made, and he wants the world to see that. But you can't be ashamed of the gospel, which is the power of God at work, saving everyone who believes. Everyone. Why everyone? Because everyone has sinned and fallen short, including me. I've done that, and all of us deserve death. But the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. Man, what do you got to lose? So, uh, what do I do now? It's pretty simple. Scripture says, if we confess our sins, He is faithful and just and will forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. And we confess our sins to Jesus because He said, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Man, what do you have to lose? Would you like to pray with me? The world is coming to an end. The world is coming to an end. Uh, well, do I have time to pack? Listen, World War III is on its way. Fire and brimstone, fire. Well, now, World War III and fire and brimstone, that's, that's a horse of a different color. I think about this. Ooh. I think I got an idea. No, 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 I see some potential in this. Hold on a second. Wait a minute. Wait, wait, quit huffing. There you go. Let her rip, baby. Got you on video. Now, before you start complaining, remember, at some point, all our stuff's going to be in the movie theaters. Stop it! No, I'm serious. Listen, just stop and think about it. Cool down for a minute and think about this. See, but <gasps> sales, and then we get Caesar to take up the offering, you know, stick the old basket under her Really? Face. Yeah, really. I'm telling you, we can raise some money to get to some mighty fine missions trips. Think about it. Tahiti. Cabo San Lucas. Cancun. Look, my ex-wife is in town. Maybe even parent your ex-what? Wife. Say what? And no, it was not my fault. That woman was crazy. Tried to kill me. Deranged. Well, now, now I know a lot of wives who, the, you know, the thought of killing their husbands has crossed their mind more than once. Now, whether they'd actually do it or not is a whole other thing. Listen, let me tell you something. This woman was crazy. This is what she did. She slept with a knife under her pillow. Under her pillow? She slept with a knife under her pillow. And this is what she said. She said, at the first sign of a snore, I will cut you. Cut. That woman was serious. Crazy. At the first snore? Snore. <laughs> I haven't heard that one before. <laughs> all right, all right. So she's in town. Right. What do you think she wants? Alimony. She wants some money. Money. I didn't know you had any kids. My kids are grown. Well, if your kids are grown, she doesn't need the alimony for them, right? Right. So who she want it for herself? This is not about my kids or her. Mm -hmm. This is about Pookie. Pookie? The cat. Pookie, the cat? She said it was our other child. Well, did you get a paternity test? You know what? You're not gonna take me serious, are you? I am. I most definitely am. <laughs> Pookie, as soon as I quit laughing. You know what, I'm out of here. Listen, we'll talk later, okay? Pookie's a dog's name. Pookie. Wait, wait, wait. <laughs> that man just can't take a joke. 
Speaking of which, ooh, and Deacon Hall. <sighs> I just love days like this. Just love them. Yeah. Morning. Billy. How you doing? Yeah, I'm doing great, sweetie. Give me just a second. Sure will. Just mark this before I lose my spot. Got it. What you up to? What are you preparing for Sunday's message? I'm trying. But honestly, I cannot quit thinking about McKnight. What's wrong with him? Evidently, his ex-wife has shown up. Ex-wife? I didn't know he had one. News to me. What she want? Alimony. I didn't know he had kids. News to me. But in fairness, they're grown and they're off on their own. So what she want? For herself? Not exactly. Are you ready? Yes. Are you ready? <laughs> it's for Pookie the cat. <laughs> Pookie the cat. Pookie. <laughs> she must be something. <laughs> you know what that sounds like to me? What? Sounds like it's going to be more trouble around here. That's what it sounds like. Ooh. Ooh. Mmm, you might be right. Mmm. Mmm. I think I'm getting excited. Mm. Excited? Think Deacon Hall, Billy. Deacon Hall! Here's what I'm thinking. What? That would be another good story to tell at the precinct. That's what I'm thinking. There you go. Mm-hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. So what's on your mind? Well, I was just curious. Have you been studying about miracles lately? Why, do you need one? No, we've had one. No kidding. We right here. Happy day. Hey, come on in. Have a seat right here. Well, look who's here. I want you to meet Robbie Jones, new creation in Christ. That is awesome. You called my mama. Evidently, not new creation enough. Hey, hey, what is wrong with you? Police brutality. <laughs> what do you want me to call a doctor for you now? Gentlemen, gentlemen, excuse me. Could we please get back to the issue at hand? And no, I did not call your mama. The fact is, she came to see me. Evidently, she sees something special in you. She was just asking for some help. So, I called Judge Prescott. Been a friend of his for a long time. And I can always call him back. Well, you just do that. I thought you told me he got saved. What can I say? I don't know. Shoot. I'd have said anything to get out of jail. He didn't say that. Billy, he did not just say that. Yeah, he did. Yeah, he did. Excuse me. Judge Prescott, Judge Prescott. Here we go. Hold on, hold on, hold on. No, I am not going to hold on. I am not going to sit here and play some silly little game with you. And if you think you intimidate me, you've forgotten you don't. What? You going to pull out your little water pistol again? No, I don't have to pull out my little water pistol again because I've already pulled out Judge Prescott's little old phone number. Listen up, buddy. I've known her for 25 years, and she's tough. You'll never win an argument, trust me. But Billy, am I not fair? She is fair, that's for sure. So, in the spirit of fairness, I'm going to give you two choices. One, I can call Judge Prescott. Oof, that'd be ugly. Oof. Or two, you can let me call a friend of mine who I'm pretty sure can help. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Billy, I do believe it's time for a little bitty old auction. Go for it. 
So, going back to jail? Going once. What do you think, Robbie? Going back to jail, going twice. Mm -hmm. Going back to jail for the third and final time. Okay, okay, okay. Call your friend. Wise choice. Mary, hey, it's Lynn. Would you do me a favor? Tell Deacon Hall that I have a little project for him. <laughs> Deacon Underpants? 